Glenn exists to bring about the full and equal participation of lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender people in all aspects of Irish life, from our constitution to our schools, our workplaces and in all our services, and particularly for our relationships and families. Atlantic's commitment to Glen allowed Glen follow its strategy of building majority from a minority and delivering transformative change for lesbian and gay people in Ireland. We did that by engaging really good professionals, by building very strong relationships with politicians, with TDs, with senators, uh, with senior decision makers and departments all across a whole range of areas and enabling them to deliver on change for lesbian and gay people. The passing of the Civil Partnership Act was a great achievement for Glenn, but it was also a great achievement for all political parties and it was a great achievement for Ireland. <laughs> Marriage is the next step, building on the resounding success of civil partnership and we continue our intensive work towards that goal of marriage in Glenn. Catherine Zappone and Anne-Louise Gilligan um, stood on the steps of the High Court and declared their love for each other as two women. I think for anyone watching or listening to that, it was a game changer, it was powerful. They became icons and really lit the fuse, I believe, under what has become the marriage equality movement in Ireland. They really changed everything. We got members of the community and others who would be champions for marriage equality to literally go along to their elected representatives and to say, I don't know if you know that this is an issue, but it's an issue for me and we really want you to take it up. I don't think there's anyone in the Dáil or Shannad or anyone, very few people anyway, in the public domain who don't now know that marriage equality is a demand. We do not believe that the state has any right to rule over the human heart. We support the right of gay couples to marry. That is why the Programme for Government included it for consideration by the Constitutional Convention. The Constitutional Convention was, I think, a real success from a number of points of view. One, on the issue. There's no doubt that getting 79% of that grouping to say, yes, we want the government to move on this, we want the government to introduce marriage equality, was a huge success for all of us. It was also a success for the sector. Uh, we managed to work really well with Glenn and the ICCL in getting that result. The other figure that isn't mentioned much, but actually is just as important, is that 81% of the convention called on the government to make sure that our families had equality. Well, the transgender community, the T, um, is often tacked on to the LGB. Um, so you have the LGBT community, but what we found is often that the T is a bit forgotten or it's pushed to the side. Um, and that's in large part because when you're talking about with LGB is around sexuality, and the T is very much about gender identity and gender expression. Tenny's existence um, and the support that we've received through Atlantic Philanthropies has actually allowed us to save people's lives. It's not in an abstract way, but if you're thinking about a community that has been so um, marginalized and invisible for so long, to have an organization that exists, uh, that provides support and education that people know they can pick up a phone, reach out to us and know that there's somebody there to listen to them um, and that we're there to refer them along to other services. 
The research out there shows that trans people have some of the highest levels of suicidality, experience regular harassment and violence, and also systemic discrimination. Ireland is the only country at the moment in the European Union that has no legislation to account uh, for the recognition of a transgender person's um, preferred gender. We have a draft heads of bill, so that's really the start of the legislative process. So that will provide a pathway for an individual to be recognised in their true gender and have their birth certificate changed. I'm 16 years old and I know exactly who I am and I have not got a disorder. <laughs>With Tenney's formation in 2005, uh, the trans community's expectations uh, changed and as a result, younger people's expectations changed. They now see uh, transition, uh, equality, um, hormone treatment, transition paths, all as a right rather than something that they hope to have and they are demanding those uh, rights now and they are willing to stand on the streets and shout about them. We need to be heard. Trans people in Ireland are being invisible, still not recognised by this state. Trans people go through their daily lives struggling with society that thinks it's okay to poke fun at us and laugh. And all we want to do is live dignified, respectful, private lives. in a kind of interesting sort of way today where we have a phone, we have Skype, you know, it's not the usual setup and that very much illustrates the challenges that still face the rural LGBT population of Ireland across Ireland because the limited infrastructure prevents us coming together. There were two main impacts on the ground. One was the development of a social network at support groups as well, but a social network where rural isolation was targeted, that people actually got to meet other people. So that was one big, big benefit. The other was the move towards involvement in civic life. What, you know, what I witnessed over the duration of that programme was much increased number of people who were willing to come out, who were willing and able to identify as LGBT within their local community. In thinking through how these organisations have managed to achieve so much in a relatively short space of time, I think it's really that they've had the capacity to think and act strategically. So providing core funding on an annual, uh, multi-annual basis allows organisations to build relationships with those that they're seeking to influence and build up the expertise as well in order to become a resource to decision makers and others. Atlantic's multi-year commitment allowed for Tenney to employ core staff, um, which was unprecedented in the trans community. The Atlantic support in the first instance has been a support for the vision of marriage equality. In some ways we've done two things, we have uh, unleashed that potential and that passion that the supporters of marriage equality have but more than that, we've been able to channel it into political change. And that's, I think, the legacy. One of the most moving things about uh, the work that Atlantic enabled Glenn to do is seeing lesbian and gay couples stand up in front of their families and commit to each other and to do so, to express their love in a public way. That's never been able to happen in Ireland before and that's radically changing lesbian and gay people and their sense of who and where they are in Ireland and it's changing Ireland for the better. You feel the power that comes from all of the organisations working together. It has left a legacy of positive change including that sense of LGBT organisations around the country working together so the inspiration of confidence and the belief that as a community we can work together, that's a big, big legacy to me. Happy Pride!